I'm really having to fight the overwhelming urge to make a Star Trek joke on this one. If you are a longtime viewer of the channel, first, thank you. Second, you know that anytime I'm debating Star Trek on the intro, we're looking at something reminiscent of the original uniforms worn by James Tiberius Kirk on Star Trek The Original Series. Today, we're doing just that. However, this time, we're adding a little bit of sparkle. In this bottle is another of the chameleon inks from Diamine called Olive Swirl. As another viewer brought up on a previous Diamine video, chameleon in this sense refers to how the shimmer particles in the ink are going to play different with the lighting conditions in your room. That said, these shimmer particles have to be some of the most stubborn ones I've seen in an ink in a long while. If I can get it on camera here, and according to my preview, it's actually doing a pretty good job, you can see quite a bit of particulate here on this edge of the bottle. There's more that's been filtering down as the bottle's been laying like this. As an educated guess, I would put it at about a quarter of a mil of the 12 mil bottle being completely devoted to small flecks of glitter. So it's actually a little perplexing that I'm having a harder time getting shimmer on this ink than the other offerings from Diamine. I say that, but past me has apparently put into the script here that the particles are actually doing a good job showing up in the test writing samples on Rhodia. I'll have to roll the pen a couple times before filming the writing sample to see if that makes the difference on camera, but this kind of feels like a blink and you'll miss it type of shimmer. Kind of like a... Oh. Nice one, Diamine. Unintended living up to the name. I like what you're doing there. Aside from the Star Trek vibes, my first impression is that this is a decent olive ink. But does it live up to the showings of an Alt Goldgrun or a Goisu? That's something for you to decide. What I can say this time around is that I think I'm going to spare us a little rant on the bottle opening and get to the ink blot so we can get to forming our own opinions. Right off the bat, I'm feeling a callback to the previous olive inks that I've looked at. The upper mids have a nice moss green with olive overtones and maybe a hint of tea green fading in. As we move over to the lower mids, the tea green completely fades out and what is left is more of a firm olive with hints of moss poking through. And if the camera angle and lighting are playing along, you can see shimmer particles here on the ink blot. It is really hard to miss them though here in these transition tones. Speaking of which, once this ink hits the transitions, it quits being olive and comes across more juniper or midnight pine. It's still an amazing look, but don't expect to see the ink get this dark unless you're using a super wet double broad nib. Speaking of wet, how does this ink dry? Well, this one had me doing a sanity check. You can see here at the 20 second mark on Rhodia that I ended up doing a second line to see if the shutoff from 15 seconds to 20 seconds was legitimate. Turns out, yes, it is. This ink is page turned dry by 20 seconds on Rhodia and looking at it over here on Tomoe, tells the same story, complete with the second mark at the 20 second to see if the dry time was, well, accurate. So we have an ink with a color that I like, a little bit of shimmer for style, and an acceptable dry time. All that's left on the KPI is the water test. So let's see what Script Yevi has to say about this. Well, according to the sleep deprived me that wrote this script, I'm going to be floored by the water performance from this ink. With water on the page, I kind of think I was right. I'm not seeing levels of color lift that would have me worried right off the bat and I can already see what's looking like a bold underlayer here on the page. And sure enough, once water is off the page, that underlayer easily earns this ink a four out of five for water performance. The original color is kind of gone, but the underlayer is extremely easy to recover. And with KPIs like this, I'm pretty sure that I can forgive any shortcomings that may be present in the writing sample. Speaking of that sample, we're starting this week again on Rhodia. Let's cut to the chase. This is not a super lubricated ink. As has been the case with most of the recent diamines we've looked at, I'm able to feel more of the nib on paper than I would normally prefer. Aside from that drawback, I like what I'm getting here. Sure, the line width on Rhodia is a little thinner than the normal lines this broad nib puts out, but I am getting the dynamic range that I was hoping for out of it. So I'm willing to let that slide. Just be sure to use it in print script though, if you are wanting to see more of those dynamics in play. Moving over to my daily driver paper of Tomoe, print writing is still the king for dynamics. Line width is a little better than what was on Rhodia, but not by much. 
a broad nib is definitely going to move closer to medium with this ink. Also, much like on Rhodia, I'm feeling a bit more nib on paper than I would like, but it's not as bad on TR, and that is to be expected. TR is going to provide less of a toothy feeling than Rhodia in most situations with a properly tuned nib. But with this ink, you aren't going to be feedback free. Overall, this is a good consistent ink with good KPIs to match. I feel like I've been saying this quite a bit with Diamine recently, but with this ink, when it hits bigger bottle form, I think this is going to be a good shoe in for being part of the ink shelf. And that does it for a look at Diamine Olive Swirl. If you liked that video or found it useful, then hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.